Hi guys, welcome to Witness Mommy Knees. I'm Peter. Today we're going to try something completely out of left field. I got my own mascot here as a miniature made by Algorig Miniatures. I just knew that I had to do something very special, very unique with him. I found this old Game Boy and it was just like broken down. Let's just start and see where we end up. So for this project, I didn't really know exactly where it would end up. I just had an initial idea that I wanted Wiley to get inside the Game Boy somehow. So I just start by taking everything apart, uh, visualizing as I go, and making outlines of where things will initially end up. I then realized moving parts might be something I can play around with, like the nubs for the volumes and the contrast. I then go to town on destroying a lot of it. Finding those knobs really changed the idea of how big the screen would be. Since I wanted them intact, I had to shrink the incision somewhat. But that's okay, I'll just cover the white areas up with something diorama-like at the later stage. Then it's time to go to town again on the plastic details. As you notice here, I don't have all the tools needed for this kind of job, but I make do with what I have. And then there is plastic card. Very good for this kind of stuff, just cutting up pieces with an X-Acto blade and then gluing them together with a hot glue gun fast, quick and easy. Making the cube size that I want to get an idea, a diorama inside of this gaming world will look like. So for this diorama, I'm going the nature route. So I just took the kid outside to walk in the forest near our home. Just to get inspiration and maybe replenish the old storage of free basing stuff for the diorama. All of this is just found out in the wild and just baked in the oven just to get rid of any bugs. I also go through my bits boxes and my scrap boxes that I have uh, over from other projects, finding everything that screams nature to me. I then start the basing, uh, just figuring out first where everything should go, have a thin layer of milliput on the ground so I can stick some stuff in place before I glue them down. If it looks like I'm having a plan here, I, I, I don't really, I just go with the flow, just seeing what I think fits. When I have a composition I feel okay with, I go in with basing glue from Geek Game Scenics and of course coconut fibers from IKEA. I cover up all the mess I made on the screen with milliput and stick some branches and leaves in place just to uh, make it mold together with the diorama once I put the screen back on. I then use my regular surface primer black from Vallejo, making sure to cover everything and then going over with the white ink as a zenithal, hitting quite hard so that I can work with thin layers of contrast paint on top of it, both through the airbrush and then by brush. I don't stick to one brown, I use them all that I have in my arsenal. Gorgrunt of fur, snake bite leather and wildwood. For the stone, I choose to paint it in a blue color, just to make it pop a little bit more than a gray wood. Center stage, I go in with very thin, light green color. Then I go in with scale 75 artist color range heavy body acrylics just to add highlights all over the diorama. I then do freehand on the walls of the diorama, just painting trees in the far distance. This doesn't show up that great on camera as I'm painting it. Hopefully you'll see a little bit better at this view. So this was the first intersection and the first time I realized that something was wrong with my diorama. The perspective was wrong. The depth of feel was wrong. So yeah, this was my solution. I looked around for positions and angles that I liked. And then I just incorporated the best angle that I could find. Just fooling the eye that there is more depth than there actually is and losing that square-like feel of a box. I filled the new base with milliput just like before, 
making it ready for basing. Here's a little sneak preview inside of the world. I continue to close that gap between the diorama and the display with more grass. And then I install the butterflies for the nubs. I can now control the flapping of those wings with the touch of a finger. The second thing I noticed, despite the depth of the diorama, was that I was in dire need of light in there. So off to the store I went. And here we are again, screwing things up, destroying them, seeing how they work, just bought something cheap. I think this was about four bucks. I thought I'd make it work somehow. And once again, this project had become adapting. Um, like I never even thought in the beginning that I would get light in there, but then I had to make it work somehow. And I found this cheap lights. I figured out how I could attach them, how to connect it to the power switch of the Game Boy so that when I switched it over, they would connect and thus the light would come on. With the light in place, I had to install a diffuser roof so that the light wouldn't be as sharp. And with that, I also painted a little ceiling of the forest. Just on regular paper with sponges and brushes. Before I bust out the airbrush and paint the exterior of the Game Boy, I paint all the insides of the screen, so to say. Um, both the butterflies, the grass and everything. I really want to take this time to thank my dear patrons for having patience with me in taking this time so that I can do the things I love so much. And with that said, this one's for you guys. Okay, now that that's over, I start masking off some of the Game Boy's exterior since I want some parts of the see-through mechanical parts to be there on the final products as well. And then I go in with the same black primer as always. Following up with a layer of purple Chimera paints, then some white ink with the help of paper, making harsh lines and then going over them with a thermatic blue from Citadel Contrast Line. And now for that sweet, sweet moment when you take off that tape. Oh yeah, there we go. That's the spot. And then it was actually time to start painting the miniature itself. So I started out with a lot of greens on my palette, just starting a wet blend, moving on to brighter and brighter colors and going more and more for stippling as the higher in brightness that I got. And as for details go, I will not be getting into any of them here, more than to say that, of course, Wiley is our witness of minis, so his eye is the main focus point. I start every eye I usually do with Rackard Flesh Tone um, from Citadel and then I paint in the um, outline of the iris, placing all the reflections where I want them. I get these thin lines with just black ink, making sure to have a good brush for this step is vital so that you get those clean clean lines it of course helps very much that this eye is not as small as on any other miniature this is an eye that is fun to paint 
that's for sure. After all the black is filled in, I actually go in with brighter white and ivory color for the iris. I didn't get that on tape, unfortunately, so you have to trust me on that. But I do that because I want the yellow to pop on the later stage, as you see here. Then go in with um, undiluted heavy white acrylic to paint in those reflections really hot and bright. And lastly, I take an orange ink and I shade the downside of the iris just to get more variation in the yellow. And it really, really sells the effect. Okay, guys, we have a problem. Uh, the monsters have escaped, okay? So Wiley, he's one of the good guys, okay? You know that. But the other ones, not so much, okay? So one of them has disguised himself as the subscribe button. So go down there and just hit him. So here we are. He gets sedated and I can just pick him up later. And the other one, he's hiding behind the like button. Uh, like thumb arrow shaped or something. So yeah, punch that too and maybe we could get rid of him. I don't know where the third one is, but if you see him, write something in the comments, okay? Uh, thanks. Before we put everything together, we need tufts. So this is what it looks like, he's holding it in the hands. And now I'm assembling it together, putting the light a little bit above so it doesn't show through. And trying everything out before I glue it together. Then putting it inside of the frame that I picked up from Ikea. Just nailing everything shut and making sure it's centered found this website online where you could make your own text blocks from AP Games. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to make your own. So I just put that inside of the display and voila, he's talking. Feeling quite happy with myself, I now only realize that the display itself is kind of murky. After countless times of trying to polishing it, I break out the Dremel and make a window into the gaming world. And this is the final result. I really hope that you liked it and that you got something out of it. So the only thing that I really can ask is that inspired some of you to do something for yourselves, something that is just so unique for you and that you could have on your own shelf. And with that said, if you want to support this channel, you know you can find me on Patreon. All the links are in the descriptions below. And come hang out on our Discord. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.